Okay. Okay. Facebook's up. Zoom is up. I am here. We are ready. Welcome in, guys. It is Wednesday. Today is uh, it is nine o'clock. Um, skip guard clipper tapering. We're going to be using snap-on attachment guides or guards on our clipper to create beautiful, true, classic tapering. That is the technical focus of this program. And then we're going to at 11 o'clock for green initiatives. We're talking green. We're not talking money green. We're talking environmental green. We're going to be talking about things you can be doing in your business. Take a more green approach to things that you're doing in your business to talk about how that can help your environment, how that can help your community, how that can help your customers, how that can help your world, and coincidentally, your bottom line. That's right, green initiatives are good for business. So uh, that's what we have in store for today. We'll be getting into that. Of course, you know, I started out my day today with a phone call with my friends at Barbicide, uh, the world leader in infection control, obviously on everybody's mind these days um, as we take good care of customers and look to protect ourselves and our business and our reputation. Barbicide certification, I know many of the people that listen into my programming long ago have become Barbicide certified. COVID-19 certifications, safe establishment certifications, back to work planning. Barbicide.com, their link is in my profile on my Instagram. That's one of the fastest ways to get there or go directly there online at Barbicide.com. We're going to talk about clipper care and maintenance today, so of course that means we're going to pull out the clipper side and we're going to talk about spraying our clippers, every clipper, every trimmer, every client, every time, no exceptions. And one of the subjects that I had in conversation with my friends at Barbicide today had to do with our foil shavers and whether or not we should be using them and whether or not we should be, uh, that we can be safe with them. And the answer is a wet dry foil shaver can be wet. It can be sprayed, it can be saturated, it can be totally coated in this good stuff. And as a result, with clipper side, a foil shaver is absolutely safe to be used. It is absolutely disinfect a bowl, sanitize a bowl, clean a bowl, protect a bowl, and all those good things. So that was a big answer that they were looking for from me for this morning. In keeping with tradition, $100,000 haircutter is the way we start the day. We always start with a daily reading from $100,000 haircutter. This is your daily devotional to success in the business. This book sits on your night table. And when you wake up in the morning, you turn to today and you read today, today to jumpstart your day with a tip, with a trick, with an idea, with a concept. Haircutting, sales, marketing, hiring, recruiting, training, management, sanitation, you name it. It's all in the book. This is like a digital download of my brain. Paper, audio, or digital, however format you like to take in your information, that's $100,000 hair cutter. So we start today with today, and today is May 20. And this one's real near and dear to me. I mean, they're all, they're all good, they're all important. It's like picking a favorite kid, because I wrote the whole book. 365 days, plus a bonus week in the back, plus two additional monthly focus topics of areas you can focus in on. So May 20, day 140 of the year, with 225 days remaining in the year. Take a break for stretching. Stretching exercises, you know, our industry is loaded with opportunities for repetitive motion injuries, for physical stress and strain, and I have a barber license, I have a cosmetology license, and several years ago I made the effort to become certified as a personal fitness trainer. Now I don't work in a gym with bodybuilders, weightlifters, and marathon runners. My fitness education was specifically for me to be able to work with beauty industry professionals on issues of health, wellness, and long-term physical durability so that you and I and everyone else can enjoy the longest healthiest, most successful, and most productive careers that we possibly can. And I talk about these things at shows and events, and I talk about them here, and a lot of times I sprinkle throughout a lot of my conversation and programming elements of and issues related to this health and wellness and the importance of it. Things like drinking water throughout the day to maintain proper hydration. 
And one of my little pet projects has always been stretching exercises for beauty industry professionals. The difference between what we call static and dynamic stretching, the difference between cold and hot stretching, and the difference between stretching before work and taking a break during the day for proper stretching exercises. Today's tip was break for stretching. And I always say in a busy day in the shop, typically like a nine to five day, 10 and two, middle of the morning, middle of the afternoon, taking a break to do some stretching exercises, wrist, shoulder, upper arm, neck and back, just to make sure that we're staying loose, we're staying comfortable so that we can stay productive for a long, long time. My big caution is know the difference between static and dynamic stretching. Static stretching is stretching where you're not moving, where you're literally just gently stretching a muscle. Dynamic stretching is stretching through movement. And I use as an example of these things, um, the difference is hot and cold. So what I mean by that is before you've started work for the day, when muscles are cold, that's when you do dynamic stretching. In the middle of the day when you've been working, you've been active, muscles are moving, they're fluid, they're flexible, that's when you do static stretching, but you never statically stretch a cold muscle and the dynamic stretching will not be as valuable during the day when you're already hot, warm and moving. So let's give you some examples. If you are a hair cutter, you do a lot of this, you do a lot of that motion that puts stress on your thumb, it puts stress on your wrist and your carpal tunnel and it puts stress on your shoulder, this motion. So let's look at a dynamic and a static stretch for hair cutters. An example of a dynamic stretch, when your muscles are cold, maybe in the car on the way to work, maybe in the back room before you start your day, is what I call quackers. Quacking like a duck, quacking like a duck. This looks just like this. It's that same motion. It's getting the hand loosened up, it's getting the thumb moving, it's moving like you move for the exercise or the effort you're gonna do. The stretching exercise the dynamic stretching exercise looks just like the activity. That would be quackers for scissor cutters. Great way to get loosened up for the day. Something like this for people that use a lot of round brush just to get that wrist twisting and that shoulder moving. Static or dynamic stretching when you're cold. Later in the day when you're warm, don't do this now if you're watching, but later in the day when you're warm, when muscles are hot, when muscles have been in use, Static stretching might be angling your wrist back like that for a count of seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release and go the other way for seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, and release and shake it out a little bit. That's a good example of a static stretch, but you don't do that with cold muscles. So the tip for today is this tip about stretching. Obviously, you can read through here and gain a little more insight into it, but the importance of stretching before and after work and during the day cannot be uh, stressed enough for you to be healthy, successful, long-term in our business. So we always take one more date from the crowd. If anybody here on Zoom's got a date, if anybody on Instagram, I'm sorry, on Facebook, I'm going to pull up the Facebook page has a date for which they'd like to offer up. For us to do one more reading from the book, I would be happy to do one more. We got some people tuning in on Facebook. Uh, Monica's here. Good to have you here. Uh, good morning, Ivan. Alexander Irving, nice to see you here. Always happy to have you joining us for a little bit of time here on Facebook. Anybody got a date in Zoom land? Anybody? Otherwise, we're going to jump right into our program for the day. All right, <clears throat> we won't hold up the show. We're gonna get right into it. We're gonna go into skip guard tapering. You know, snap-on attachment guides or guards are fabulous tools for doing true classic tapering. But anytime I do a class or a presentation and anytime I bring out a guard, there's always somebody in the room. I call this person old barber guy. And it's important to recognize this old barber guy isn't always old. They aren't always a barber and they aren't always a guy. Old barber guy is not a real person. Old barber guy is a mentality. Old barber guy is a mindset. 
and I'll bring out a guard, an old barber guy will be doing this. The body language, arms crossed and folded, the head tight, the shoulders scrunched up, the head back and forth. They're kind of disapproving of my conversation about snap-on attachment guides or guards, and sometimes I'll call them on it. I'll say, hey, hey, barber guy, you don't agree with me. What's up? And they will say, we don't use guards. Guards are cheating. We, we don't use guards. We either use steel blades or we do it freehand. We do it clipper over comb. And my aunt, guards are cheating. That's one of my favorite things to hear. Guards are cheating. Haircutting is a game in which there's no such thing as cheating. Any tools we use that help us do a better job of doing what we do are fair game. I also think it's important to recognize that there's a right and a wrong way to use guards. If you got a guy in your chair and you do your consultation, how do you want your haircut? And the guy says, give me a three. If you put a three guard on a clipper and you run it up the back and sides of his head and you switch to your scissors and you cut the top and you blend it together and you pick up a trimmer and you line and edge him up and you send him out in the parking lot, is that a good haircut? That's a perfectly good haircut. Don't get on your high horse. A three all around and scissor the top is a perfectly fine haircut. Hundreds of thousands of those haircuts are produced nationwide every single day. But don't kid yourself. It's not a tapered haircut. It's a perfectly good haircut. People pay for them and are happy to have them, but it's not a tapered haircut. If you run a three guard up their head, every hair from the perimeter to the blending point is the exact same length. And tapering is a form of graduation. Tapering is a length progression. As we move up the head, the hair should get progressively longer. Can you do that with guards? Yes, you can. Can you do that with metal blades? Yes, you can. Can you do that freehand clipper over comb? Of course you can. Each one of these different tools simply requires a different approach to executing that tapered haircut. And truth be told, guards are cheap. You buy a clipper, you get a full set of guards. They work perfectly fine if you know how to use them right. And they're inexpensive. Blades cost money. Blade, the, the smallest blade is probably 24, 25 bucks now. And the bigger and the thicker those blades get, they just continue to get more and more expensive. Doesn't make them bad, just makes them expensive. It's also important to recognize a two blade and a two guard a metal blade number two and a guard number two, they do the same thing. Their length is the same. They create the same length. There's a difference between a blade and a guard, and we can get into the difference between a blade and a guard in terms of what they do on the head. That's right, Sarah, you're lucky to find them under 30. Um, a two blade and a guard will achieve the same result, albeit differently. There's a reason why you'll start with guards and later step up to blades. We can address that. But don't kid yourself into thinking they're not good or they don't work. They're perfectly fine. There are some rules for working with guards and we will cover those. And there are some techniques and that's what this program is gonna be all about. It's gonna be about the skip guard technique for creating true classic tapered looks using snap-on attachment guides or guards. So we've got a mannequin. We're gonna bring him here in just a moment and we're gonna talk about uh, and we're gonna demo, and we're gonna put some hair on the floor, and we're gonna use classic, uh, we're gonna do classic tapering with snap-on attachment guides or guards. So throw me a thumbs up if you're ready to go, and let's get ready to go. I wanna bring out my little cheat sheet, because you guys know if you've watched me a little bit, you know I love my board, you know I love my big notes. We're gonna put this one away. Because there's always something we were talking about yesterday. And there's always gonna be something we're talking about next. So let's get into some guards. You can't see my table right here, but on my table, I've lined up my guards. I got four, three, two, one, and zero. Zero, one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna write those numbers down along the edge on my chart right here. Four, three, two, one, and 
three, two, one, and zero. Those are my guard numbers. Now, what's missing? What don't I have on my table? What don't I have on my wall? Five, six, seven, and eight are not up here. Can anybody tell me where they are? Anybody know what I did with five, six, seven, and eight? You know what I did with five, six, seven, and eight. They're in the garbage can. Five, six, seven, and eight don't work. It is impossible for guards longer than a four to cut evenly and smoothly. They can't maintain even and consistent distribution, meaning from the surface of the scalp into the cutting action of the blade, they can't hold and grab the hair well. The hair will buckle, the hair will sway, the hair won't flow. So you don't get even and consistent results when we work with guards longer than a four. Longer than a four, throw them away. Also, longer than a four, longer than a half inch. As a hair cutting professional, I believe you have better ways to cut hair. We have fingers. We have scissor over comb. We have clipper over comb. We've got better ways to leave more hair on the head than a guard in the first place. So therefore, there's not a lot of good reason to use a guard longer than a four, even if they worked. They don't, so don't, but don't. That's important. Number one, which guards we're going to use and where we're going to cut it off. Literally cut it off at the four. That's number one. Number two. Let's talk about the difference between blades and guards. We already said that metal detachable blades, like an Oster 76 or an Andis BGR or the new Andis ZR, those blades that pop on and off. The Wall Mentor happens to be a favorite of mine right now. At the same length, blades and guards do the same thing. The difference is, if you use, take one head, you got a client, take their head. And on this client's head, if you cut a patch with a number two guard, and right next to it you cut a patch with a number two metal blade, they're both the same. They're both basically a quarter of an inch, which is basically six millimeters, which is basically a number two. The blades and guards don't always line up numerically like that, but I use two just as a great example. If you cut that with a two and a metal blade right next to it, the blade, the section that you cut with the metal blade will be smoother, evener, nicer, velvety-er in fewer passes up the head. Conversely, the portion that you cut with the guard, you're going to need to have to go over it a few extra times in order to get it similar to the two blade. So while they do the same thing, a... Uh, a blade cuts more immediately because it has a better ability to gain what we call purchase. What we mean by that, purchase is the blade's ability at the bottom of the teeth, what we call the tooth roots on the steel blade. They have a better ability to grab the hair, hold the hair, and maintain that tension on the hair. Somebody here said, Sarah said, cuts like butter. Exactly. There's a more buttery feeling to steel blades more immediately. You'll get there with guards, but it's going to require a little more time and a little more repetition. So what I tell people is, when you start cutting hair, we start with guards. As a student in school, you'll start with guards. As a new hair cutter in a chain, guards are fine. They're great. But there will come a point in time in which your skills and abilities and the needs and demand of your customers will dictate, it will be then time to step up to a detachable blade clipper and detachable blades. And what I tell people is, don't be spooked by the cost because you're not gonna buy all the blades. You buy blades in sets, and I used to, back in the day when I worked at Andis, I had created a blade set card that had sets. It's based on what type of work you're gonna do. As an example, if you're mostly gonna be doing classic tapered haircuts on Caucasian businessmen, you need four blades. If you're mostly going to be doing short, tight, faded clipper cuts outside the gate of a military base, 
You need four blades, not the same four blades you needed for the businessmen, but four blades. If you're mostly going to be doing really tight faded haircuts on textured hair in an urban ethnic market, African American, Asian, Latino, whatever, you need four blades. Not the same blades for the military guys and not the same blades for the businessmen. But you build these sets based on the type of work you're going to do. That's also why it's so easy and it makes so much sense to start with guards. Now, one of the points I always like to make in these tapered haircut conversations is about cutting the top first. Now, this side of the mannequin had been cut down a bit, but there's still plenty of good guard cutting that can be do, done there. This side of the haircut is way long on us. It's way long. So what I'm going to do is two things. Number one, I'm going to cut the top first. I'm a big believer in cutting down the top first. Getting a lot of hair down out of the top of the haircut, this is a concept that I call reverse blending. We've addressed reverse blending in some videos in the past. I think we're going to have a reverse blending class next week. I am working on the schedule right now for next week's classes. So if you really want to hone in on a classic tapered haircut technique that will improve the quality of your work and the efficiency of your work, that would be something not to miss out on next week. But I want to take some bulk down out of the top of this first so that I can set up the second side of the haircut to be cut. I'm going to come in with what we call backhand cutting. And notice how I did that. I comb and I hold and I cut. I've got the clipper held backwards in my hand with my zoot comb held by the handle and I'm taking fairly large sections of hair. You know on Friday we're going to cover this in a class on what we call condensed cutting. Condensed cutting is what is what we call ganging sections or gathering large amounts of hair together to be cut at once. We're going to talk about a couple tools that are specifically designed to help you with condensed cutting. But I want to just take a lot of this top down out of the haircut so that we're not struggling through a lot of thick and heavy hair above our clipper tapered section to begin with. That'll get that top down a little more and now I'm just going to come in clipper over comb and this is taking bulk down. This is not smooth hair cutting. This is not an actual haircut. This is just getting bulk down out of the way so we get into clipper taper territory. But taking that length down out of the top first ends up being super, super helpful to help us get into the game. All right. This gets us down to where we can work. And I want to make sure, I just want to check up on Facebook to make sure that we're centered in the frame nicely. Okay, I'm going to tweak this just a little bit so that we can get the numbers on the screen and the client on the screen. And for those of you in the Zoom world, I'm going to knock the camera down a little bit so that you guys can see the numbers and you can see the haircut. So here's the idea. Skip guard tapering. Now, I always make a joke about the idea that there's a hair cutter that works at the chain salon down by the mall. And she's been banging out the gimme a three. Client comes in, sits down, consultation, how you doing? I'm good. What do you want? Gimme a three. I want that three guard on the back and side, scissor cut the top, blend it together, get my sideburns even, clean up my neckline, give me some gel, send me home. Great haircut. We love that haircut. We do lots of that haircut, but it's not tapered. So that hair cutter at that chain salon one day is looking at these haircuts going, you know, if all I do is put a three on and I run it up the back and sides, everything from the perimeter to the blending points and even three, and it's not really tapered. It needs to be a little shorter at the bottom, getting longer as we go up to really create a tapered look. And they say, look, I've got more than one guard. If I use more than one guard, I can get more than one length. And that will allow me to create a tapered look. And this is where they get in trouble. They do something like this. They start low. They're going to use all their guards. They put their one guard on and they bang off a little bit of the bottom. Then they switch to their two and they go a little bit higher. Then they switch to their three and they go a little bit higher. Now at this point, one, two, three, they've reached the, the occipital bone approximately. 
and they say, well, I have a four, time to use it. Well, then they put on their four and they go up higher. And now they have two problems. Problem number one is they took their four too high up the head. We've all been to Walmart looking at the back of heads, and we've all seen haircuts where people have taken the taper past the curve of the head, taking it up too high. We don't want to do that. Tapering is graduation. It only exists in the perimeter of a haircut, from the occipital bone, the parietal ridge, or the crest line down. Anytime we cross north of that point, we're not tapering anymore. Now we're layering. We're layering up into the top of the haircut, and if we don't want to be doing that, we don't want to be doing that to throw off the balance and the symmetry of the haircut. Yep, buzz them up the crown. You see it all the time. Looks terrible. Problem number two, by cutting one and two and three and four, they've got steps. It doesn't look like a tapered haircut. It looks like a Guatemalan pyramid. It's got steps going all the way up. And once you put the steps in, you're going to have to kill yourself to take the steps out. Anybody that's ever bought an Ivan Zoot book, you know you get a bookmark. And right there on the bookmark, what does it say? What does it say? It says if you don't put the line in, you don't have to take the line out. That is correct. So we don't want to put the lines in. So what we're going to use is a technique. The name of this class, the videos online, the concept I share all the time is called skip guard tapering. Skip guard tapering. Here's the idea. Pick a guard, any guard. Pick the guard, long guard. Start at the top. We're going to cut from top to bottom. We're going to cut from long to short. We're going to cut from inside to outside. We're not going to cut from bottom to top. We're not going to cut from short to long. We're not going to cut from outside to inside. We're going to work our way down. We're going to pick the guard that represents the longest length we wish to have at the top of the taper. So for the purposes of this demo, I picked my four. We're going to start with our number four. Now you'll notice it says four, it says half inch, and it says 13 millimeters. All the same thing. And we're going to snap on our guard. And you should hear the click. And you should be confident that when the guard is on there, it's not going to fall off. And anytime you use a guard, you guard your guard. That's our expression. I've got my fingertip on the corner of the guard or my fingertip below the guard. I'm in contact with the guard. Halfway up his head, we don't want the guard to pop off. Now you're having a bad day at work. Not a good thing. Guard your guard. Now, we're going to work from toe to heel. Toe to heel. Think of it like your foot. Look at your foot. Toe, heel. Front edge, back edge. We're going to come in on the toe and get out onto the heel. We're going to move the clipper through what we call a C shape or a curving motion. Notice my motion here. I get in, get up, get out. I get in, get up, get out. I get in, get up, get out. I'm rocking that clipper from low to high, from toe to heel. Get in, get up, get out. Now, that C shape motion is the same motion when we use clipper over comb. It's the same idea. Now, cutting doesn't happen at the top of the tips of the teeth, and cutting doesn't happen at the high point in the hump. Cutting happens here, halfway between, give or take, at the cutting point of the blade itself. So what this means is, when we are curving, when we are using this C-shape or curving motion, and notice, by having cut the top first, we only have a little bit of weight. We'll talk about taking that weight off in just a minute. By cutting the top first, we eliminate a lot of that overhang, that heavy interior weight. And when we come in like this, when we roll the clipper, when we come in from low to high, and notice I guard my guard, I've got one hand on the clipper and one hand below the clipper for balance, stability, and control. Hear that clipper getting loud? That is that clipper telling me it needs just a little bit of oil. Hear the change in the blade tone and the blade pitch? Oil that clipper. Now, 
Get in, get up, get out, get in, get up, get out, get in, get up, get out, get in, get up, get out. I'm using my four guard. How much hair does it leave behind on the head? It's a four guard. It's labeled half inch and 13 millimeters. How much hair does it leave behind on the head? And this is important. This is key to the concept. A four guard leaves behind on the head one half inch or more. Two little words, or more. Correct, or more. That's because as we rock it out, we create an increase in length. As we rock it out, the hair gets a little bit longer. As we rock it out, we create a taper. This is the key. We're creating a tapered finish. Now, it's called skip guard tapering. Watch, I used my four, I skip my three and I go to my two. I put my two guard on. I go half as high as I did with my four. My C tightens up now. And I come in and I get in, get up, get out, 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 get in, get up, get out. Notice, guard your guard. Balance, stability, and control. Coming up and in and up and in and up and in and up and in. If I do that just right, if I use my four and I skip my three and I use my two and I rock it out, I should have a very nice smooth blended transition from my two up into my four. In between my two and my four, I should have no line, no step, no ledge, no ridge, no mark, no jump, no bump, no weight, no demarcation. It should work nice and smooth. Use your four, skip your three, use your two, rock it out, go half as high, beautiful. Everybody with me? But what if it doesn't work? What if I use my four and I skip my three and I use my two and I rock it out, and what if in between my two and my four, I have a little bit of weight? What if there is a little bit of line? What if there is a little bit of a mark? What do I do? What do I do? I go back to the guard I skipped. I used my four, I skipped my three, I used my two. I go back to the one I skipped. The moral of the story here, the big secret here is never use two neighboring guards. Don't use your four and then your three. You gotta skip one. Use your four, skip your three, use your two. Now you go back to your three. I put on my three and I only address the area between my two and my four, and boom, I've got a beautiful blend. Use one, skip one, use one, and go back to the one you skipped only if you need it. Is everybody with me on this? Let's say you want a shorter haircut. You use your three, you skip your two, you use your one, and you go back to the two. Odds and evens, guys. If you cut with your evens, you blend with your odd. If you cut with your odd, you blend with your even. This is called skip guard tapering, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It saves you time, it saves you effort, it saves you energy, and it produces beautiful classic tapering. Now, I used my four, I skipped my three, I used my two, I went back to my three, only where I needed it to address just that transitional demarcation, and we're looking good. Don't go all the way up, don't recut what you pre-cut. You don't want to recut your whole four area with your three, you only address it in between. So now, I've got my two. I can skip my one and go to my zero, and I can repeat the process lower down. I use my zero, and I would blend the zero into the two with the one, but only if I needed it. Keep in mind, guys, this is the exact same concept if we were to be cutting a very, very short, tight fade. I want you guys to check out, if I move away from this longer, thicker, fuller haircut, and if I want to focus on something that is much shorter, tighter, and faded up, if I want to talk about this guy here, I want to show you it's the same skip guard concept, but let's look at our blade adjustment. Open, closed, halfway. 
that's still skip guard. This is exactly how, or skip blade, this is exactly how we do short tight fades. Now before we go to our next client, before we put that blade on the client, clipper side, we're gonna spray the blade, we disinfect the tool. Now obviously these are mannequins, it's not the case. You know, they're not real clients, but same idea. Now I would go blade open, blade open, and then to go shorter, I would go blade closed, and if between open and closed, I had any kind of a demarcation, I'd go to halfway and just address that little bit of a mark, but if you don't put the lines in, you don't have to take the lines out. That, my friends, is the essence of skip guard tapering. That's the concept of skip guard tapering. Whether it's using the adjustment feature on the blade when we're working super tight and close, or whether it's actually using the guards, respecting and recognizing the order when we're using them at a slightly longer length, when we're doing things that are a little bit longer. Everybody with me on that? Awesome. Let's take a moment and talk about blending now. We cut our top ahead of time, a little bit longer. We came in here and we tapered our perimeter using skip guard. Now, we do have a bit of a weight line here, and I wanna show you a couple of really cool tools for taking out that weight line. We have lots of choices. As a talented hair cutter, you've got lots of options for how you can take that weight line out. For instance, you can take that weight line out vertically, like this. When I hold it up, you see the clippered shorter hair as a guide, and you come in vertically. Vertical weight removal is a very classic way of taking weight out of a haircut in a situation like this on a men's haircut. That's number one. Number two, another great way to take the weight out would be clipper over comb. You'll notice that clipper over comb is a form of vertical. But I wanna take your clipper over comb one level up, game on, and that is with a zoot comb using snap-on attachment guards that snap onto your comb. Now people have had questions about getting these to snap on nice and tight. These two teeth on the zoot comb that I'm touching are not rounded. They have chisel points. See the little chisel points on there? Those teeth are sharper. Those chisel points go into these notches on the inside of the guard, just like the same way you would put a guard on a clipper. You put the blade end in first and you snap it back. Well, that's exactly what we do here. We put those chisel points into the guard like that and we snap it back and the tab clicks and locks on. Now. My zoot comb's a one. The guard set included with the comb is a two and a three and a four. Two, three, four. They're labeled just like your guards. They're labeled four, half inch, and 13 millimeters, just like our guards. Now we know that the top edge of this taper is a four or more, slightly longer. We're gonna come in with the guard on the back side of the comb, coming in vertically, we talked about vertical blending. We're gonna peel that right off and look how nice and easy it is to blend that. By having the guard on the back of the comb, it makes it oh so easy to blend up and in to the longer top length of hair that is above it. And we've got ourselves a beautiful haircut. That zoot comb makes it so simple and so easy for clipper over comb work. Now the beautiful thing about zoot comb is that's a multi-purpose tool. We turn it over and turn it around, and now we have our fine comb for detailing where we want to come in and do our very fine lining and edging work. I never put the comb down. I simply switch to the other end of the comb to do my fine work. I've got my big teeth and my guards for my clipper over comb work, and I turn it over and I switch tools and I go to my trimmer. Or I use my fine end here, the small end, for my fine scissor tapering. We can do beautiful work like that as well. So a lot of purpose, a lot of application, a lot of use for our zoot comb. 
One other blending tool that I want to share with you guys, and many of you have seen it, is our big red blending comb. If you're scared of clipper over comb, if you're freaked out by clipper over comb, if you're nervous or anxious about clipper over comb, get a big red blending comb. Do you know why we call this a big red blending comb? Well, it's big, it's red, and it's for blending. The red color makes it very easy to see the hair visually. Now, it's wedged. It's a four and a three and a two. It's tapered. It's thicker back here than it is up front. Four, three, two. Four, three, two. Just like our guards. Four, three, two that go on our zoot comb. It's left or right handed, so anyone can use it. And the idea here is this. If we work at the tips, there's more hair hanging out because it's thinner. If we slide it up further, there's less hair hanging out where the comb is thicker. And you notice when I use this comb, just like my clipper comb and just like a snap-on attachment guide or guard, you can see the top of the tips of the teeth tipping out towards me. But this larger comb makes it easy. It provides protection. It provides a surface you can work off of. If you're thinking that a regular cutting comb like this is a dangerous way to blend, I totally agree with you. You're only going to get in trouble with that. Okay? I would never cut clipper over comb with a standard cutting comb like this. It's half the size of the clipper blade. You're just asking for trouble. But when you go to a big red like this, and you slide that in, and you slide that up, and you look for the weight, and you blend it off, look how easy it is to do beautiful blending. We set up the perimeter of the haircut with our skip guard tapering. We layered the interior of the haircut. In this case, I layered it with a clipper. And then we come in with a powerful support tool in the form of a big red. These are not expensive, they're fun and easy to use, they're easy to clean and sanitize, and they take all the anxiety, all the fear, all the worry, and all the freak out, out of your blending haircuts. It's called a big red blending comb, and that's exactly what it is. And look how easy it's been to blend that in while I've been sharing that with you guys. Thank you for ordering your Zoot Comb. I appreciate that. I did see you there, and that's awesome. So that's your big red for blending these haircuts in quickly and easily. And that's your Zoot Comb and the guard system. You know, the number one most popular purchase on my website is this right here. It's the Zoot Comb Plus One. You get the system with the guards plus an extra comb. That's the single most popular purchase off my website right there is people buying that. So buy yourself one of those, and while you're at it, throw in a book. Throw in the new book, 100 by 100. That's 100 new haircut customers in 100 days guaranteed. With a technique like skip guard, you've got the hard skills. With a book like 100 by 100, you've got the soft skills. No matter where you are in the business, 100 new New haircut customers is what you need. It launches your career. If you're brand new, 100 haircut customers is the foundation of your business. If you're well established, 100 new haircut customers blows up your chair. And if you're big and busy, 100 new haircut customers level up. It's a price increase. Grows your business. Throw one of those in on your order and you're really ready to work. So that's skip guard tapering. That was the technique we shared for today. We talked a little bit about haircut blending. We started off with some stretching exercises to take care of you. You can't take care of them if you don't take care of you. There you go. Keep an eye out for the postman. Your book should be delivered today. I see that. I appreciate that. All right, guys, that covered skip guard tapering. We tied it into the use of blades. We tied it into overhead layering first, what we call reverse blending. We talked about zoot combs and big red blending combs. Anybody got any Q&A? 
Do you use Kipcar tapering around the ear and sideburns? Absolutely. I only demo it on the back of the head as a way to show you what it looks like and how it's done, but I use it around the entire perimeter of the haircut. That's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Anybody else have some questions about skip guard or tapering or blending or clipper side or any of the good things we shared? Big red combs, zoot combs, all that good stuff. Who's got something for us? Um... Can you do a class on keeping limber through the day? We absolutely can. We've done our healthy hair cutter class and we can do a stretching class. Um, I will make a note on that. I'm actually gonna make that note right now and maybe that'll be a class for next week. I think that's a fabulous idea. Thank you for the suggestion. Good morning, Miguel. Okay, a lot of people checking in from Milan Institute today. Happy to have all of you here. Ursula, send me an email. Let me know if you got uh, your scissors. I saw you uh, checking in on Facebook as well. Oh, uh, what do we get here? You're holding the comb at a 45, correct? At an angle, not necessarily only and exclusively a 45. Um, the Big Red, Perdita, the Big Red is available at ivanzoot.com. By the way, I also have an item there. Um, it's called a fit, also another good selling item, Fade and Blend Combo. It's the Big Red Blending Comb and the Fade Comb in a two-piece combo. Pat, popular, popular item on the site. Now, somebody asked a question here. Uh, where do you get a comb? All right, um, Elizabeth, how much coffee have you had today, and how do you take your coffee? Water. I'm not allowed to have coffee. For many years now, I was diagnosed a while back with high blood pressure. I take some blood pressure medication, and as a result, I don't drink caffeine. All of this, all of this is 100% natural and 100% motivated by the awesomeness that is this business, the incredible opportunity that is this business, and the unbelievable fun we have in this business. No caffeine needed. That's right. All right, guys, any other questions here? Let's just check. Do you skip hair tapering around the ear? Yeah, I got that one. Holding comb at a 45, any angle. Uh, I wish I had your energy. Roger, get up early in the morning and do 100 burpees every single morning. That'll do it. Because that's what I do. Works for me. Get up every morning early, go to the gym, work out, eat a good breakfast. And by the way, guys, you got to know, I eat breakfast like I'm 10 years old. Okay? I eat breakfast like I'm... 10 years old, peanut butter and jelly, and chocolate milk. Environmental class is coming up in an hour, Carly. 11 o'clock is green initiatives for barbershops and hair salons, and you're all invited back to come back for that. Uh, it shows 9 central time on Zoom. Um, I'll double check on that Zoom link. Um, the environmental class should be 11. I will double check. I'll go there as soon as we're done, and I'll double check on the timing of that, and I'll make sure that it is right. Okay? Thanks, guys. Anybody else final questions? Otherwise, we're going to wrap it, and we're going to move on. All right. Appreciate you all being here. I'll see you again here at 11 o'clock for the Green Initiatives class. Thanks for checking in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for asking good questions. And we'll see peanut butter jelly and a waffle. Yeah, when I used to do chair shows, when I used to travel and stay in hotels, peanut butter and jelly and a waffle was my morning breakfast. You got it. Love it. All right, guys, have a great day.